Surreal Willie like it. Rock the Casbah. Rock the Casbah. Oh yeah, party people in the place to be. What's going on? It's me, it's me, and this is the spoiler review of Rock the Kaz Ba Baby, yes, aka Bill Murray starring as Bill Murray in Bill Murray, the Bill Murraying of Bill Murray in Afghanistan. That's basically what this movie is. It's Bill Murray being Bill Murray all over the screen, and you just have to sit there and watch it. Now, here's the thing about Rock the Casball. It has a star-studded cast, and all of them can be fucking replaced. You have Zoe Deschanel, her character can be played by anybody. You have Bruce Willis, his character can be played by anybody. Scotty Kahn, his character can be played by anybody. Danny McBride, played by anybody. Kate Hudson is in the movie, played by absolutely fucking anybody. Nobody it could be fucking replaceable. Just all fucking replaceable. Every last one of them, they spend a ton of money on these on these actors paying their fees, and they all are fucking replaceable. Except Bill Murray. Bill Murray, this is the Bill Murray vehicle for Bill Murray to be Bill Murray, and he Bill Murray's the move the hell out of this movie. It seems to follow a similar formula to St. Vincent, in that it starts with a guy broke down on his luck, starts Falling for a blonde hooker who's out of his league, changes his life around with the help of a kid, needs some money fast, tries to pull off scams and one-liners and, and so on and so on and so forth. The difference is St. Vincent is lower budget, played more for the heartstrings than this movie does. This movie plays more towards lighter, just kind of riffing one-liners. I was... Not in a, a very full movie theater, which surprised me a little bit. I was laughing at the one-liners because I got the one-liners. I think there are some people who forget what Bill Murray does well, and that's subtle fucking comedy. The kind of shit that, like, take Ghostbusters, for instance. A lot of his ad-lib shit, you don't catch the very first time you're watching it. You don't catch the second time you're watching it. But as you're watching it time 10 times 20... You start to find, you, oh, he said that line. Oh, that line is funny, and that line is funny, and that line is funny. So, it, Bill Murray stars as a down and out agent, former rock agent uh, to the stars, or at least seemingly to the stars. He's scamming people for money, telling them that he's going to represent them in, you know, $1,200 for headshots and wardrobe and all the other bullshit. Zoe Deschanel plays his receptionist who wants to be a star and she's doing karaoke nights and cover versions of shit and uh one of the their first gig that we see them in apparently they've had others is at this uh, little dive bar and people are walking out on Zoe Deschanel there's this super drunk guy who apparently books for USO tours or whatever and uh, or tours uh, over in the Middle East to entertain the soldiers I don't know if they're all if they all have to be USO or not Anyway, because I don't think they said USO. Anyway, he books them on this tour. She's miserable on the plane. They get off the plane. They go to the hotel. They meet Bruce Willis for half a second. He goes down to check out the club, comes back up and finds Zoe Deschanel missing with his passport and his money gone. Bruce Willis apparently smuggled her out of the country. So all the money that they spent on Zoe Deschanel, she's gone in five fucking minutes. All right. Bruce Willis is in this movie. A little bit longer, but he's in it a little bit at the beginning, and then a huge chunk he's not, and then he's in it at the end. He runs into Scotty Kahn and Danny McBride, who are weapons dealers, and they take – basically, he's he's lost in Afghanistan with no way out, and he's trying to find a way out, and they send him on this suicide mission to try to sell some guns to this little village at this little village – he finds this girl singing in a cave all by herself because women in this culture are not allowed to sing publicly. And she wants to be a star. There's this Afghan star thing like American Idol. We open the movie, we see her watching it, and then it cuts to Billy M over in Van Nuys hustling would-be talent. So he finds her there. He tries to, he, he wants to get her to sing. She runs off. He tries to convince her father that she needs to sing. He calls her infidel and the bullshit. She can't do it. She can't do it. Yada, yada, yada. Rabble, 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 rabble. Along the way, he meets this taxi driver 
who is his interpreter, because at some point you were going to need an interpreter in a movie like this. They drive away in the taxi, and they get a flat tire, and they go to change flat tire, and she's laying in the trunk, right, because she was going to sneak off to be a part of Afghan Star, period, point blank. And so it's like, okay, fine, I'm your manager. And they go off to Afghan Star. He convinces the whole slash producer of Afghan Star to put her on the show because she sings so beautifully, don't you agree? He puts her on the show. She gets a lukewarm response from the audience there because it's just a, it's just clutching the pearls. If they had pearls, they would be clutching them. How dare a woman sing in public and on national television? Meanwhile, under the surface, she's getting all the votes to go on to the next round. Her father finds out. He's upset. Everybody's upset. There's death threats to the studio and whatnot. The father comes to collect her and take her back to the village. Billy M has to try to devise a plan to get her back along the way, along the way, by the way, while trying to find money. He meets up with Kate Hudson, who plays essentially the blonde hooker from St. Vincent, except she's not pregnant and much hotter. And she convinces him to try again. And he tries again. And this time, he coerces the producer to keep her on the ballot. She stays on the ballot. She makes it to the next round. He then tries to coerce the father to let her back on the show to sing again. He won't have it. He won't have it. Along the way, Kate Hudson's prostitute character goes off to this big party. She finds out that the weapons that this small village has are duds. They're useless. And so as Billy M. and Bruce Willis are going to this small village... To try to collect the girl, Billy M finds this out, and then he devises a plan to have the, that small village defend itself against the people who want to take it over and grow poppy there. They defend the village. Billy M gets shot, but in the shoulder, because there was a second they played Knock Knock on Heaven's Door as they're waiting for the crew to come in. And I'm like, are they going to kill Billy right here? Are they going to kill Bill Murray right here? And when they shot him, I was like, oh shit! But then I saw, oh, it's in the shoulder. He'll, he's fine. He'll live. <laughs> and that's what happened. So because he helped that village defend themselves against the big bullies, the father says, fine, she can go. And fine, she goes. And she, I think, fucks around and wins the competition. They don't necessarily show her winning the competition, but I think she fucks around and wins the competition. And apparently at the end there's a title card because apparently this actually, at least that part, was based on a true story, I'm guessing, where this girl was on Afghan Star against everybody's thoughts. I don't know what happened to her. I have to look into that. The former guy in the small village that's now the head of this militia that wants to take over, at first thought, I'm like, is that fucking Davari? Is that Sean Davari? That looks, that fucking looks like Davari. I don't, they're not necessarily Arya, but who I used to manage. But uh, that looks like fucking Davari from WWE. Are you sure it's not him? Sure it's not him? I looked up his eye and he'd be his eye. I'm like, that looks a lot like him. Or Muhammad Hussein. That really that looks a lot like, but no, it, it wasn't. So that's Rock the Casbah. The strength in Rock the Casbah really all comes from Bill Murray because this is Bill Murray's movie. It really is. Like, he gets all the one-liners. He does all the riffing and stuff. He has all the jokes. He has all the subtle Bill Murray-isms in there. And that really works as far as I'm concerned. On the way back to Casa de Surreal, I looked up the Rotten Tomatoes, looked up the reviews of it, and the Rotten Tomatoes is not very good. As of taping, it's at 8%. It's at 8% right now as of taping. And I'm thinking to myself, 8%? In the words of Peter Venkman in Ghostbusters 2, Have we all gone mad? 8%? That movie is better than 8 fucking percent. All right? Rotten Tomatoes, get, get off it. And the viewership of Rotten Tomatoes voted at 41%. It's better than 41%. But the strength of this movie really relies on Bill Murray. It's Bill Murray's movie. I can see why it wouldn't have the highest rating because after watching it, everybody else in this movie who's not named Bill Murray is fucking replaceable. It's not to take away from the talents of those actors. I like those actors. But the way they were written and or directed, none of them put their stamp on it. None of them made those characters there. There's, and really, for the most part, they weren't in the movie long enough to, a lot of them. Like, Zoe Deschanel wasn't in the movie really all that much. She was in it for, like, five minutes. Bruce Willis was in that movie, and he was kind of Bruce willis it up, but he was not really. When I say Bruce willis it up, I'm thinking 
you know, uh, the kind of shit we saw on Friends from him. You know what I mean? Like, it's the, it's the kind of shit that he's doing more of nowadays. But the strength lies in Bill Murray. It really does. This is Bill Murray's movie. This is Bill Murray's vehicle. And he works. Say what you will about anything else. He works. And I saw this from a different perspective. I think if you're a professional wrestling manager, heel or face, you should check out this movie. Because, especially if you're on the Indies and you're working, because his rap is a decent rap. Because of the little subtleties and stuff that are in Bill Murray's performances, including in this movie. And he plays a kind of skeevy manager that redeems himself in the end, but it's, it's still kind of a skeevy manager. And you should probably watch it if you do promos of any kind. You should probably watch almost any Bill Murray movie if you do promos of any kind, because just those performances work. And his rap in this movie works. I can understand a lower rating than above average. I can understand why somebody else would maybe give it a C, or like a 70, 65% or whatever. 8% though? Come on. You assholes damn near gave Jurassic World 100%. And that movie was bullshit. <laughs> Rock the Casbah <laughs> it is much better than that. I was into the story. I was into the story of Rock the Casbah. Maybe I'm going to be in a minority for this. I don't know how all the ratings are going to work out, work themselves out. As I'm sitting here telling you this, here tonight, this Friday, from watching Rock the Casbah, I liked Rock the Casbah. And Rock the Casbah, from me, I gave it in the trailer review. Well, you got my $15. That's that much. That's right. And I'm giving it, after watching it, eleven twenty-five dollars of my $15. I was going to say eleven to eleven fifty, but let's put the difference. eleven twenty-five dollars of my $15. On the strength of Bill Murray. On the strength of Bill Murray, go watch this movie. All right, party people? Are you with me? Are you again me? Are you listening to the other reviews and feeling like I'm giving this a little bit too much play because I'm a Bill Murray fan. Listen, I'm a Bill Murray fan, but I sure as fuck am not going to go see that Ghostbusters bullshit that he's cameoing in. All right, I'm a, go I'm a Bill Murray fan, but Operation Dumbo Drop or whatever the fuck movie, uh, no, it was, uh, it was whatever, the one with the fucking elephant. That movie was shit. All right, I'm not, I, I'm not stupid. <laughs> All right, I'm a Bill Murray fan, but I understand good and bad movies. And I thought this movie was fine. I think it's getting a shellacking, too much of a shellacking that it deserves. What about you? That's what's important. What about you? Do you feel that same way? Do you think that I'm going too soft? Do you think I'm going too hard on it? Do you think it's the greatest movie of all time? Uh, were you one of the people in the movie theater with me that heard me laughing and was wondering, what the fuck is this guy laughing at? Was that a joke? Yes, it was a joke. This was a Bill Murray subtle joke. Just subtle humor. Subtle humor. I like subtle humor. I like the big gregarious humor too, but I like subtle shit too. It's just that you don't always catch. And I feel like that's uh, that's this movie. And again, if you're in wrestling business, two movies that are out right now that you kind of need to go see to brush up on your speaking skills, Steve Jobs and Rock the Casbah. That's what I'm saying. Tell me what you're saying down there in the comment section, party people. YouTube.com slash the real 469. Go over to the right hand side, click the little blue button that says support. You'll be supporting. Huh? And that ain't bad. Boom. Boom. And boom. Suplex City, Suplex City, bitch. Suplex City, Suplex City.